welcome back again. This is Rebecca Wood at the Athens County Public Library, and Shelby is here. She, uh, they are doing our technical support with the filming, and we're so appreciative. This will be on the Athens Public Library's website, correct, Shelby? Mm -hmm. That's and correct. And how might somebody find these if they want to look for them to practice along? We are going to have weekly events set up on our calendar. They're going to be called Yoga with Rebecca Wood. You can just click on it on our calendar, and there will be a link to the video there. All right, have fun. I think that's really amazing and wonderful. We might even have a guest to teach her hair one week. I'm trying to get a special guest to come in. And Shelby May come out and join our Yoga in the Park series just for a little bit of fun, which we'll be doing through at least the end of October. So we ended uh, with some TheraBand work in the chairs, or at least demonstrated that in our last session. So we're going to do a few standing poses with the TheraBands. And then as you experience these, I want you to chime in. Perhaps there'll even be a chat section. I don't know. But why? What difference do you feel when you're activating that TheraBand throughout your body? Does it enhance your balance? Does it give you a little more height with breath? A little more awareness of your body and it's certainly activating in a very small way these muscles these muscles where you can tone them up very quickly so again I don't like to clasp because of arthritis issues but I just roll the uh, TheraBand I'm starting and standing in Tadasana mountain pose usually I would have my hands anatomical I'm pulling the floor away with my energy of my legs and ankles, and I'm drawing the energy up the muscles of my legs. My core is activating, and I'm going to inhale my arms up into Hastasana, from Tadasana. If you have shoulder issues, you can always do happy cactus arms or bent arms. That's fine, but there's a little tension in my TheraBands, and it just makes it a little more challenging and activates a few more muscles. I'm going to reach up in Hastasana, and I'm going to float over just as much as is comfortable to the left side. Still the action in the therabands. Exhale, center. Inhale up. Exhale to the opposite side. So a type of half moon, Ardha Chanjasana. There's a variety of half moons. Oh, good stretch. Reach up, reach and exhale, and yes. So still in Hastasana, this is work right here. You're going to feel it. So I'm going to do my lat work. So I'm not, I'm not sticking my head forward. I'm moving my arms down and back. If this is too much of a challenge, just come forward until you get more flexibility in the armpit region. You can go back and forth. And you can do full arms down, full arms up. This is a lot of good work in strengthening and sculpting the muscles of the arms. So just another use of the TheraBands. And it aid, actually I'll do one more with the TheraBand because it does aid, I believe, in the balance. And balance is a part of the vestibular system that if we don't activate and work on every day, we lose our balance. And we do tend to lose our balance as we age, have injuries. And then if you close your eyes, your balance is a whole other thing. So we're going to use these TheraBands in the action of the feedback mechanism with the muscle trains for our balancing activities. So we're going to inhale up onto our toes and have the TheraBands slightly activated. And and up, and you may have a good or a bad balancing day. That's just normal. And down. And I'm going to do it a little wider. And up. Find your dristy, your point to look at. Whoop, whoop, good. And down. And walk it out. We're going to use this to move into a warrior three, a standing warrior three, which are three limbs off the ground. So you're just being stable with one. And I think this is a fun way to do it. Um, be safe in your surroundings whenever you do any balancing pose. So we're going to lift up, step forward, 
and we're going to find our balance point as we come down I'm gently pulling apart on the therabands I'm reaching stretching and bend my knee we come down big drafts to that three warrior three this other side's a little more challenge for me a little numbness in that leg from a spinal injury but let's see how it goes and any amount of practice makes you more efficient in your balancing. So using the therabands to accentuate a balancing pose. So again, standing poses, Tadasana, the core of all standing poses. It's a lot of work. The core is gently on, ribs down, transverse abdominis up, belly button up and in, shoulders down. Inhale up, Hastasana. I'm going to swoop down into Uttanasana, standing forward bend. You can soften the knees if you like. You can have your blocks here for support, a chair here for support to do your Uttanasana. Stacking the joints. I like to swoop my hands backwards as I reach up through Hastasana and down to Tadasana. Beautiful. Three lovely standing poses that are very important. We'll also do tree pro pose today. We haven't done that yet. Rikshasana. And there's three versions of tree pose, or you can have a chair and I put the chair away. But if you needed something for Walking out and in from the... So if you need a little something for stability, please do that so you feel safe. Uh, a counter, a wall, anything might help. So tree pose, three positions. You can just have the toes down and the heel resting on the inside of the opposite leg. You can start with hands in contemplation mudra. And this is a dance. All balance poses are a dance. We are never static in yoga. You're going to have your hands in Namaste hands. The hands can float up to Hastasana or Happy Cactus hands. You can look up and reach up. You can float one arm down and then the other. The trees sway in the forest, so that's just fine. You can sway too. Exhale down. You can bring the foot up. Some folks fuss about putting it right on the knee. You're never going to push your knee out all the way. But it can rest on the calf or around the knee. Fine. You can do one hand balance if you need this hand. Find your balance pose. My tree might be a little wavering today. I like contemplation. And up. Yes. And it's the recovery. It's the floating in and out of balance. Reaching that leg all the way up into the inner thigh. And there's nothing wrong with using a support. Safety is paramount. And if it gives you that stability, then you're practicing what you need to create balance for yourself. And it's a dance. Finding a focal point. Excellent. Breathe. And down. You'll do this on both sides. So you have your choice of low. We call this baby tree. <laughs> a sapling. You can come up to the second pose. Or you can come all the way up to where the foot is pressing into the thigh, the knee is reaching out and down, find your balance, reaching into the earth, bringing the hands up, up, up into Hastasana if you so choose, or contemplation mudra, knee is reaching out and down, rickshaws in a tree pose, be playful, blow and breeze, Come back down through Namaste hands and release. 
Good. So we did a variety of standing poses, Tadasana, Udnasana, Vastasana, and tree pose, Prachasana. So those are a few that you can practice with. We'll look at chair pose next week. A little more challenging, but really good for working the ankle flexion and the quads. Right now, we're going to come down onto the mat. And we're going to do a little pelvis balancing. And this is probably a good time as I'm moving about to just again say thank you to the Friends of the Library for sponsoring this and approving this and allowing us to get together via videotape and thanking Shelby for her assistance. And hopefully you'll be doing this with friends or on your own so you can keep your practice going. It only works if you work it. <laughs> so keep that in mind. We're going to do um, a little uh, Padagustasana, uh, hand to foot while we're on the ground. And we're going to start with a seated pose, Janashashasana, forehead to knee. So some folks will need a little lift to sit on. It helps if you have tight hamstrings. This is beautiful outside with the mists. Pulling the flesh away from the sits bones. If you have really tight hamstrings, you may want a ball, a tennis ball, or a support under the knee. That's just fine. We'll go through the core sitting poses, and then Janashashasana, uh, forehead to knee. And then we'll do Padagustasana, hand to foot, laying down. Both nice stretches again for the hips, hip flexors, uh, and just for releasing tension throughout the body. So Dandasana, staff pose. And believe it or not, it's pretty hard to sit this way. <laughs> Here's how we know we sit. And then the head comes up. And this is not what we want to encourage. So we want to slide that neck up, core on, and this little lift here often helps. You'll see children just sitting like this, beautifully tall. It's not until we get our cell phones <laughs> or the TV do we begin to slump forward or driving the car. So Dandasana staff pose is a nice strengthening sitting posture, asana. And do you remember what asana means? Is that a lot of work? No, it means taking a seat with ease. So find what's easy about the pose for you. And then practice in and around. Create your own variations. Explore. And then be safe. So I'm going to have a little support for a knee. I'm going to reach under my left knee with my left hand. Pull it up. Give it a little hug. Rock back and forth for a moment and then slide the foot, just like in tree pose, against the inner thigh. And if you have a knee issue or you want a support for the knee, you can use a prop. If your ankles tend to collapse in, you might want a little prop, even a rolled up uh, washcloth underneath that ankle. You can use the strap as a support for this, but we're going to start by just sitting and then we'll use the strap to add a little extra. But remember, don't go beyond your range of motion. Move up to your edge. Back away a little bit. And find the joy in the pose. Let your breath open and expand and relax into the pose. So we have our leg adjusted. Fingertips are out to the sides by the hips. Palms are going to reach up to the heavens. We're going to pull the energy up from the earth. We're going to look up, reach up, stretch up, and we're going to exhale and just come about a third of the way down. Pause, breathe, keep pulling this leg in. You'll feel the energy of and the core is on. Hang out here for a moment or two and breathe. Inhale up, reach up, exhale, come halfway down. Keep pulling this leg into the hip socket. This gives you a little more 
forward movement. Inhale up. Draw the arms down to take a little break. Maybe you need to roll the neck for a moment or two. And this time we're going to go two-thirds of the way down or as far down as is comfortable for you. Again, you can use props. You can use another blanket. You can use a bolster. And who says you have to go over the leg? It is forehead to knee. But if it's easier for you to go over the space created in the V, that's a great pose as well. You might want to go over the opposite knee just to feel the different stretch. So be playful and modifying all poses to fit you, your body, and what your body says it wants to do today. It's, a, it's an organic experience. So I'm going to reach up, float up, I'm going to really look up there, and I'm going to exhale, float down, 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 down. You can grab your foot, yay, if you can't, that's fine. There are days when my forehead may rest on my knee, and there are more than not days where it won't, <laughs> and that's okay. But as I inhale, I float up. As I exhale, I float back down. Inhale up. This time I'm going to take my left hand and bring it down to the outside of my uh, right leg and slide it down. Right hand is a little support here. Breathe. Exhale. Release a little further. Fill the torso with the breath. And exhale a little further. You might even be able to reach around now. If you've given yourself, I apologize, I've broken all the rules of a good yoga teacher and didn't turn my phone on. So if that ever happens to you, it's okay. Just turn it off. <laughs> so. Most crises aren't much of a crisis, are they? So this is forehead to knee. Janushashasana. And yes, you would do it to both sides. We're going to move down through Setubanda, which is a bridge pose. We're going to use a bridge pose with a block just for a little work on our abductors, adductors. And then we're going to end with Padagushtasana and the foot, and we'll use our strap for that. So I'm going to come down towards the middle of my blanket. Most people will need a small folded blanket for their, their neck. You don't want your chin poking up into the air when you're on the ground. You can be playful coming down and use your core muscles and unroll. That feels pretty good down here. I just hang out here for a few minutes, shall we? Is that okay? <laughs> ah, and if that feels like what you need to do, then I would say, do it. <laughs> Two or three breaths, go ah, swoop the wrinkles out of your yoga pants. Feel the pose. Feel the relaxation. Feel the earth supporting you. So you can let go. Oh, but if we had hours to do this. But you can at home. So we're going to bring again our feet flat on the earth. I don't like my feet on a blanket because I don't want them to slip out. So I just tucked it under here a little bit. That's fine. I'm going to take whatever size block I like. You can use the round soft balls. They can go here. This is actually I do this in my Maya fascia practice, my body alignment practice with clients. When I go to the PT, these are the exact same moves that they use to help you train your pelvis, to stabilize your pelvis, your SI joints, and to balance your ab and adductors, the muscles that add the legs together and the muscles that pull the legs apart. And they're all connected to the glutes, the piriformis, all the good hamstrings and quads. So, a lot going on there. 
but a lot of us have pelvic instability or lumbar sacral issues. So having this block between our knees, we're just in the first position. We put our core gently on, that flattens the lower back a little bit, gently engaging the inner glutes, draw the perineal floor up and in, belly button sinks, press gently about 30, 40% energy with the block, and hold it breathing, maybe even smiling while you're breathing, for 40 or 50 seconds. You can do your counting breath. You can do the longer exhale and inhale. You can just be mindful. And then when you release, keep the block engaged. So that's position one. Position two, feet come out to the sides of the mat. It's all the same adduction, adding the muscles of the legs together, but I'm pulling on different parts of the, the musculature and the fascia because of the different positions of the legs. So here again, core goes on first. It's very subtle. But the more you work the core, the more stable and strong the lumbar sacral pelvic girdle is going to be. I'm adding about 30% energy. Some people like their hands down. I'm going to hold this for 30 to 50 seconds. And you would repeat these three or four times each and release, but don't lose the block. Last position, I walk the legs longer and you can flex the feet if you want. Sometimes you might get leg cramps, so just release if you need. Again, core, squeeze, breathe. This is more work than you realize. And it has a wonderful neutralizing effect on the pelvis and on balancing the strength in the abductors and adductors. Right now we're working the adductors. And release. Bring the feet to first position. Hug the knees in. Straighten them out. I'm still pushing. Point and flex. And depending on your lower back, you can support the SI joints by the thumbs underneath there and very slowly lower or just fold the knees. Depends on what you want to work today. So that's one session of adductors. Now we're going to balance the abductors and we'll finish up with Padagustasana. So I'm taking the yoga strap, putting it around just above the knees on the thighs. Adjust it so what's comfortable for you, but trying to have your legs about hip width apart. Again, get those wrinkles out of your yoga pants by lengthening the spine. And we're going to pull the energy out, so the abduction. First, as always, we're putting a core on. Your golden girdle of support. And then pull out 30, 40% energy. Breathe for 40 or 50 seconds. Keep that action. Release. Don't let the strap uh, fall off. Remember the other two positions? You got it. Legs out to the side. Core is on. Out comes the energy. Obviously, I'm not taking as much time as you could be taking with this because we're trying to move through for demonstration purposes. But I think you got it. Be playful while you're here. What happens when you flex your feet? And what was the third position? I think you remember. Walk those feet in and then down. Come up on the heels. 
Core is up. Out goes the abduction. Oh yeah, this is quite nice. This is going to tone and firm and sculpt the obliques, the musculature in the legs. And release. We're going to walk them back up and keeping a little abduction. We're going to come up and down into Septubanda, bridge pose. And again, if you don't like having a blanket under your head, that's fine. It depends on you. We just don't want our chin poking up so that we're hyperextending our cervical spine. So either keep reminding yourself or have a tiny support, and some people might need a larger support. So I've got my uh, core on. My abduction's happening, and now I'm going to raise up, squeeze the glutes. You can do this with the block as well, and down. A cramp, maybe. Well, if you do, just wiggle around one direction or the other. Make sure you're getting enough potassium, magnesium, calcium blended together in your foods. Again, core, ab, and ah. Uh, and dropping through the thoracic zone and all the way down to the lumbar sacrum. Last time, abduction, core's on. Up. If you want to bring the arms up and over, that's nice too. Feet up, arms up, and then come down one vertebra at a time. Lovely. The pause is as important as the pose. So take that into account. The slower and more mindful you move, the more you're training the slow twitch muscles and activating different parts of the brain. Breath can truly affect the brain as well. Reducing that crazy hippocampus, I mean uh, amygdala, and enhancing the hippocampus. So we're slowing down, creating resiliency. So Padakustasana, remember Janna Shashasana was forehead to knee, and we're going to do Pada hand to foot and a variety of different poses. I like using a block or a rolled up mat or a blanket here so that I don't extend too far out and slip my little SI joints too far over. So you want a comfortable stirrup for your arm and leg. You want the arm to hang comfortably, not on the buckle. You don't want it pulling your shoulder off the ground, nor do you want it completely bent. Try to open the back of the knee with the leg at 90 degrees. If it doesn't open all the way, that's fine. But we're opening the back of the knee. It's reaching away. And this helps lengthen the hamstring. Try to keep that strap on the forefoot, the ball of the foot, it slips off sometimes. The opposite leg is bent. I'm going to inhale, and then I'm going to exhale, open slowly, the hand to foot out to the side. Some people will just unfold right onto the ground. Why not take your time, be safe, go slow. Inhale up. Reach up. You can press through the opposite foot, flattening and widening the spine again along the ground. And that opens the attachments even more of the upper hamstrings and open. The opposite hand can be out to the side or on the hip for support. Inhale up. You can slide the opposite leg down. This is going to give you a much bigger stretch. Reach up. Exhale. Open. Breathe and 
thought. You can point and flex. Hold this for three to five breaths. You're safe, you're secure, you're grounded. Inhale, use the core to come up. One extra little baby stretch here. You're switching arms, crossing barely over the midline. You'll feel it. Oh, yes. And then back. Draw the opposite knee up so you can release and let it go. For the sake of time today, we won't be doing the opposite side, but you know that you'll want to do the opposite side. And you're going to stretch both legs long. If you need something under the knees, if you need something underneath the thighs, please take care of yourself so that you're comfortable. We'll do a few minutes of the Loma breath, three-part breath for this Shavasana. And again, all of this works in amazing ways if you work it. If you don't do it, you don't have any of the positive effects. But you can do this work anywhere. I like to have the hands just resting on the belly, maybe contemplation mudra, maybe yani, where does it fall? I'm going to breathe into the basement, the bottom of the front of the belly and the lower spine. Fill that up first. So three parts. We're going to inhale, pause. And then we're going to inhale up to the thoracic. Ribs moving out and pause. Then I'm going to inhale all the way up to the armpits and the back of the cervical head, the ears. And then exhale completely. So let's try that three times and see how that goes. And then you would just fall into your own savasana, five to ten minutes. Perhaps you would set a timer. If you fall into a sleep and you have the ability to do that and not be rushed or startled when you wake up, that's great too. And the mind is awake and alert, though, in savasana. It's not judging, it's observing. And the more it observes without judgment and you have the breath, calmer it seems to get and allow some of that judgment to, oh, I don't need to be judgmental. It kind of floats away. So we're going to do just three, three-part breaths. We're going to inhale to the basement. Pause. And you'll be able to retain your breath longer each time the more you practice this. Don't make yourself feel uncomfortable to start. Inhale the thoracic spine, ribs out to the sides. Pause. Inhale all the way to the armpits, ears, back of the throat, the uh, cervical spine. Pause. And exhale completely. Squeezing it out. Inhale the basement. Pause. Thoracic spine. Pause. Inhale all the way up. Exhale completely. One more time. Basement. Thoracic spine. And cervical spine. And exhale. As you continue to breathe, I'm going to roll to my side and come to sitting so that I can observe you relaxing and enjoying and being in tune with your body, your breath. I like this chi timer that I have. It's a beautiful little chimes or bell. I have to find it each time. But you're just breathing, observing. You're allowing your physical body to be heavy on every exhalation. You're breathing with the inhalation. 
circulation between the skin and the bones. And exhaling, letting everything drift down and out. Inhalation. your hands and namaste hands. Feel the breath of life underneath your forearms, your special breath. And keep practicing. Namaste.